Uh, we got two. It's going to be a head-to-head. -head. I was going to do individual tabletop reviews on them, and then I started thinking, like, these are really like the same gun. And it's going to be a really interesting value in comparison and contrast on builds. This is a factory-produced Bushmaster Minimalist, 6.2 pounds, if I'm remembering right, without a magazine. That's pretty darn light. This one is about the same weight. It's called an AM15. It is a component build, thanks to Wyatt and company there. I think just by showing this sign, I'll be demonetizing YouTube. Yeah, so again, maybe I'll use a different hosting service. But thanks to them, he puts this gun together using what I think is a good component selection. Not the highest quality for sure because this is a price point rifle. I think it's around 700 bucks for this one. That one is retailing for 1170 so maybe around 950 street. It just really depends on where you get it. Which one would I buy? Good question, really. Component build, by the way, this really brings up an interesting point. Uh, and the point is this. Guns that are component built either by the end user or by a gun store like this uh, are not necessarily bad and frequently they're actually pretty darn good especially with the component quality that I, I've been seeing for the last few years. I have a video out on this. It's called Do Hobby AR-15s Really Suck? It's in card there on the top. Go watch it if, again, this ends up in YouTube and check it out. And I really defend the whole process of putting together your whole AR-15 and I talk about the genesis of of the term hobby AR-15. And I've learned a lot doing this gig in YouTube for so long. I know a lot about the industry. I know a lot about the industry secrets. I know a lot about the secret deals under the table between all types of people. Lots of people talk. And what I feel is that the term hobby AR-15 emerged to dissuade people from putting together their own AR-15s, trying to convince them in a marketing way that they're gonna be garbage don't, def don't defend your life with a hobby AR-15 that you're some type of fool, mon mall ninja, if you put it together. Why? Because they're trying to market a certain brand of AR-15. And there are collaborations before between a tactical instructor and a certain brand, and it, they want to build that brand. They want to push more units of that brand. And so in the, the purchaser's mind, they're going to try to convince you that if you put together your own AR-15, you're an idiot. Rant complete. Thanks for listening. Thanks to Gunnies once again. And also Federal Premium for giving some boxing of ammo. Not a ton. Some. I wish I had cases. I really do. I don't get that. They don't like me that much. Hey, you can have six boxes for this tabletop. Hey, it's better than nothing. I'll take it. So Federal Premium in conjunction with Gunnies, the greatest American gun store ever. They've been with us since about 2013, Wyatt and Company. So back to the ARs, which one would I buy? Hobby gun, go watch that video. I talk a lot more about that whole concept in there and I really defend the concept. I think most people will agree with the logic that I throw down there. And we're shooting guns while we're talking infield. It was tactical dueling myself. Philosophy of use is obviously a super lightweight AR-15 and one that comes ready made. I know a lot of you guys like to roll your own. Heck, I do it too. It's fun, you can get exactly what you want. I tend to go rather high end when I do a roll of my own, like I'll use BCM stuff, and my gun isn't really saving me any money. In fact, it's probably costing me more money. The, de the upside is I'm getting exactly what I want and it's top notch. This one with AM15 and the components he's using is not like bad at all. I think it's about medium quality. We're gonna look how both of these guns shot. Again, we'll draw some comparisons uh, before the end video ends for sure. But it's kind of, uh, again, a value point gun. D does that mean it sucks, though? Well, wait till I talk about how they shot. So we're going to talk about features, how they shot, and would I buy it. And then I'll attempt to answer that. I want to ruin it. I want some drama in the video, dudes. Uh, features. First, I guess, on the AM-15. What components did Wyatt use? Well, we got Blackhawk furniture. So that's a Blackhawk buttstock. I don't have any problems with that. I actually like it. I don't know if I've shot one of these before but it's a six position standard uh, AR stock. So it's very similar to the military one. Has a little bit better of a cheek piece on it. QD cup here, you can see there's a flush mount swivel there. We've got a standard castle nut, an attempt at staking, no sling plate there, don't really care. It's funny how single point slings have really fallen out of favor. I think if you're running a checkpoint, a single point setup is actually pretty good. If you're gonna be doing some running, maybe not so good unless you have a retention device put on your belt, like a Velcro retainer. I do have those and it works out pretty good. 
uh, components is a block hot grip. It looks very ergoish to me though. The receiver is an Anderson manufacturing and I think it is a Cero. Yeah, it's a Cero forge upper and lower. You can see the, the forging marks there. It's a little keyhole right here, Cero. Cero, so it's a really good forge. So it's 47075, not CNC'd, which I like. Great upper, great lower, no problems with that at all. I think this is a generic four end. I sure like it though. Yeah, and this is a mid-length gas system on this build, the AM15 AM build. And let's see, the handguard is called a gun tech. It's probably made in China. But if you think the Chinese stuff is crap, think again. Think again, I don't care if you're talking about knives, watches, guns, the Chinese stuff is really good. Really good. I mean, it has come so long from the early 2000s with NC Star stuff. Speaking of which, there's an NC Star laser, I think, or something. It's a green laser. This is a, he, Wyatt put this on, I didn't put it on. I didn't use it when I shot the gun either, guys. Uh, of course, you see the scope here. I love this handguard though. Key mod, again, geez, I don't care about key mod. M-Lock, they're both fine. This has even a different system we'll talk about in a second. I do have some key mod stuff, so I just kind of stick with it. I'm not running an M-Wrap or anything, so it works great for me. Look how narrow and profile this is. Locked on good, it didn't twist at all. It's got a, a six bolt, I was gonna say four, six bolt retention setup here. There are better retaining systems to be sure, but again, value point. Mid-length gas system. This is a Bear Creek one and eight barrel. One and eight twist. It has what looks to be like a Phantom 5C2. I don't know if that's a genuine YHM or a knockoff. I really don't know. I didn't put it on. And a thin barrel. So it's kind of a pencil barrel. This is where some weight savings is taking place. Chrome plated, 223 marked, uh, 223 wild, I should say, one and eight twist. And then we've got some generic BUIS on there included in the build. So remember that. So you're getting a lot of value for your money. I, I want to say around $700. Don't quote me on that. I could be wrong. And then for the bolt carrier group, I'm not going to break these open for time. Uh, I don't know the origin of the BCG on this. I did take it apart. I checked it out. It looked, uh, not looked, it is an M16 BCG properly staked, I guess you could say. Again, M4 feed ramps. Um, but is it like the highest end BCG? Uh, I couldn't tell you. I could ask Wyatt, but I forgot to text him on that. Hey, nothing fancy, that's the most important part. Agree, it is a very important part. I, I, I totally agree with that. But a BCG and having an extra one is really easy to do. Anybody who's running AR-15 should have that. I do, I have extra ones. And if you don't like this one, you know, swap in a higher quality one. There's all kinds and I've shown them over the years. So you guys know about that. Standard uh, controls, trigger is military specification. I pulled it, I'm not gonna do it here. Six and a half pounds is what it pulled. It's mil specish, you know, not great. But again, value point gun. Kind of a cool attachment system for this green laser. And I do like green lasers. If I'm going to run a laser, I would prefer green. The downside to this one is it's just a little bit bigger. I think that's a double C123 power cell arrangement on this. I do like the simple push push button. I don't like wires and other crap. Uh, I still like VGs though. I still love VGs on my guns and I do run them frequently on my own ARs. And then we got a Lance 20 in this just for looks. And that features pretty much, oh, standard charging handle on that. Then I have my Aero Precision uh, reviewing scope. See, it says gun tester. This is my Burris from way back. It's a full field 30, works fine. I think you can still get those air precision in FDE. I think so. So that's the, the components on this one. And then we'll go to the Bushmaster Minimalist. If you want it, here it is, come and get it. It has an MFT butt stock. I actually like this stock a lot. The MFT is what I put on all my guns. It's like my fave, it really is. And I, you know, I can't say I keep up with every little AR-15 or black rifle development. And there's probably some other really great stock options out there. Hmm, stock options. Uh, I like this one though. What I've said about the MFT is that maybe it's not ultimate strong if you have to do like a pile drive so you could snap this part off. They used to have the paracord between here. I have a couple that have that. I really like that. The MFT stocks are awesome. Uh, mil spec tubes, buffer tubes on both these, by the way. No sling plate, a meager attempt at staking the Kalsanuk. Castle nut. I've always said I don't really care because if I want to put a sling plate on there or take it apart, you know, I'm just going to strip that thing off anyhow. I just keep these tight. 
I'm always checking the tightness of them. You know, maybe your mileage varies. And then this trigger on this gun right here, I have an old school coated Colt 20. I think this has a little bit better trigger on it. Yeah, where's my trigger scale? I guess I'll pull it super quick for you. Ooh, 411, better than I thought. So Bushmaster Mentalist, Mentalist, I actually like that. The Bushmaster Mentalist actually is pulling lighter. And it's got like a matte chrome trigger on there. Standard AR-15 control, standard charging handle. Uh, I think it does have a mil spec. And no, actually an M16. I was going to say an enhanced AR-15, but it's also an M16 BCG. I don't doubt Bushmaster quality for the BCGs because I've ran bushy rifles forever. Lots and lots of rounds through them, and I've never had a BCG failure or a bolt shear ever. No, I'm not like a multi-thousand round competitor. I'm not. Those are the guys that really test their guns and heat them up. Uh, but I, I think it's probably better quality than this. That's what I'm saying. Then, let's see. Anderson Anchor Harvey Receiver, I think. There you go. Anchor Harvey is the forge that put this upper together. It's not marked on the lower. 7075T6 standard. Same scope setup, although I have a Nikon on this one. It's a Pro Staff 7 running in an Aero Precision. Man, I love those mounts. Like I told you guys, and I've been talking to some dudes uh, in Patreon about these. Just make sure you tighten them down. So they're cost effective. I have a price written on I think they're like 58 bucks. No, I'm sorry. 85 bucks is what I wrote on that one for that tan one. But crank these down. Uh, not QD, not quick detachable. But again, I don't think most guys care. You're just going to run your optics, especially for civilians. If you're a military guy in and out of armor, then that's different. This, this probably is not a heavy enough uh, setup. And that's fantasy and how your unit's going to supply you with com something completely different. And then we have an MFT pistol grip stock with a trap door for putting stuff in. Be careful of that. Like I've always said, some guys are like, oh, a trap door, I'm going to start packing it full of stuff. They're like a chipmunk who's found some acorns and start packing it up. And 6.2 pound rifle ends up being nine pounds because they got a bunch of stuff hanging off it. Hmm, go watch my video. You got too much crap on your AR-15. Uh, the name is good. The Minimalist, I kind of think that on all my ARs. I want it to be fast, super lightweight high speed, if it does not deserve a direct first cool purpose, I don't like putting crap on my ARs. Uh, I want super fast into action swing weight, especially up here, I don't want to have any crap. There's one reason I criticize the heaviness of that light. Sometimes you need it, I mean, sometimes you need a laser des designator, sometimes you need uh, a flashlight, for sure. Not saying that. Uh, pencil barrel on this, one and eight twist. It is, I think, 4150 steel on this one, so it's a known quantity barrel. But I've always said the quality of the barrel is really shown in what? Accuracy. That's correct. Carbon length, carbine length, gas system on this, both DI guns, obviously. One and eight twist again. And this is an AAC, what do they call this? Uh, I think it's a 5.1T muzzle brake, and I absolutely hate it. It is so bad. It's a fork a tuning fork so every time we shot it, it's like twang twang and it's a proprietary setup so it's set up for their screw on suppressor i don't have those i would definitely take this off i think it's big it's bulky and i just don't like it at all it didn't do much at all it didn't like kill flash it didn't compensate the rifle i'd rather have this one the 5c2 one is a better option to me at least it kills the flash somewhat and then the hand guard is their proprietary, I hope I get the name right. No, it's the AAC square drop handguard. So this is square drop attachment system. Apparently it works with key mod as well. So it's a third system. The diameter of it is pretty cool actually. I don't have a problem with it. It has a real cool attachment method. This is for either the scope or the mount. I taped that on there, so that's why that's there. Uh, no loosening at all. Standard M13 on top. No BUIS with this, right? That's a good looking handguard. And that's features review. Okay? So just on that alone, say in comments which one you would like. I mean, I think I know what guys are going to say, right? The Bushy. Because it's kind of a known quantity. A uh, little bit higher quality. I think the bolt, the innards are good. Uh, probably better than this. Sorry I don't have the exact name on this. Uh, the innards on that, but 
you know, again, you could replace them. And then let's talk about how they shot. This is where the rubber hits the road, guys. If you want a good AR-15, it's got to shoot accurately. If it doesn't, I don't want it. Here's the AM-15. This group sucks. I mean, that's side end. This is running American Eagle. For whatever reason, I have some XM-856 tracers on the table. I didn't shoot those in this. I just grabbed a box of federal product as a thank you. Um, not great. Here's a Bushmaster XM-15 minimalist. Huh, that's not great either. PMC shooting bad. I don't know if, I, I wanna be fair. I don't know if I should say bad. I, I do see a lot of AR-15s shoot this way. I was kinda of expecting a little bit more though, to be honest with you. That's a horrible group. I mean, that's like freaking three and a half MOA. Federal Amer American Eagle not shooting good. Tulamo Steel. Um, bad accuracy, oh, good trigger, I said that. I don't see any notes where I said there's human factors involved, so it's me. So, not good. That's not good. Um, here comes the Bushmaster Minimalist again. So I put some, some really good ammo through it. I shot a bunch of Hornady 77 grain steel through it. I know it's steel, but it's really good ammo. This is the best group I could come up with. Norm Attack 55, Horrible PMC, Hornady 77 Steel, Gold Metal Match 69 Grain. It's a 1 and 8 twist. And it shot like that. I got a good group here. Still not MOA, PMC. Also, I had another target from the AM15. Oh, it's over here. Let me grab it. Sorry. It's way over here on the other side of the missile silo. Stand by. I'll edit it out. I feel a fart coming on. I'll leave that in too. If you want it, don't come up here. It's gonna kind of stink. Here's the AM15 right here. Just... Wah, wah. Whoa. So I was shooting and actually I was like, well, is it am I just having a bad day? So I shot my AR. This is what I shot. Right there. AM15 77 grain match. Pretty good. I think this is just ball ammo out of mine. 77 grain, horrible, horrible. M193 standard, 77 grain, not good. So I'm gonna call the accuracy on both of these guns um, fair. Not even good, fair on both of them. Now you might say, well, those are pencil barrels. You can't expect them to be accurate. And I'm gonna disagree with that. You actually can expect them to be accurate. I have BCM enhanced lightweight barrels. Granted, it's a higher cost product, I'm kind of directing my comments more towards this higher end gun that shoot MOA. So yeah, you can cut a barrel even though it's thin, doesn't mean it's inaccurate. And you know, the dispersion when it really heats up will be something, but sometimes not so much. I was disappointed with both of them. Now, let me say this, take in mind, uh, take into consideration, I should say, cost. This one is almost double the price of this one. So I'm gonna criticize this one less for shooting that way because this is a lower price value point AR-15. Okay, so are we? Are, is it realistic to expect MOA? Mm, probably not. I will say there's some ready-made ARs that shoot really good. The Ruger AR-556, like I showed you guys, was incredibly accurate. So was the Smith & Wesson m and Sport. Both the first and second generation shoot very accurately and they're about the same price as this. So it can be done. It can be done. Uh, but again, this is a component build. You could call gunnies. I, uh, I don't know if you saw my cool sign yet. Did you guys see my cool sign? Here we go. Oh, it's lost in action. Oh, here it is. Gunnies, the great American gun store. Call them right there and say, yeah, hey, I want that build, but upgrade my barrel. Do that. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, do that. And then they'll put it together for you. Let's see what up. Reliability wise, 100% both guns, both with brass and steel all round shot. As far as I remember, again, if I go to post-production, I find something different, I'll come back, let you dudes know. But as far as I remember, both are great. Uh, so dynamics were standard AR-15, normal shooting characteristics. I did like the trigger on the minimalist much better, but they both shot good, they were fun. And so Jardine was my crew, if I remember. I can't remember if Sean helped me shoot, but I think Jardine did trigger time on it and then myself. And that takes us to which one would I buy? This one. Did I surprise you? What? 
but a better quality in the minimalist. Mm, yeah, I mean, like I talked about in the interior, probably. The receiver quality is identical. From what I'm seeing, the barrel quality is identical. That's just my mileage. That if a barrel is really well done, like if it has an even distribution of chrome plating or melanite coating, whatever, it's going to shoot. Okay, and I didn't see that from Minimalist in multiple outings. I could not get it to shoot MOA. Not the end of the world. The accuracy I show you, totally sufficient for most practical purposes. But an, ac an inaccurate gun to me is not interesting. Yeah, I, for me either. I don't like it. And so, if this one shoots the same as that one, it's almost half the price. Component build. From, from, from a store, of course. I, I don't mind the trigger guard. Receivers we talked about, triggers easily fixed if you want it to be. The, the furniture, I wouldn't change out for a value price. And it's got a rail already. So unlike like a Ruger AR556 or a, an M&P15 Sport, you've got a free float rail already that granted, is it the highest quality in the world? No, but it's lightweight, it's trim, and it works and it doesn't rotate. Do you ever need to replace it? I guess if you want to go, you know, impress your form buddies, you can't. <laughs> I'd probably just leave it on, man, and run it. I'd buy this one, dudes. And then I'd run it, shoot a lot, see how it works. I'd probably put about 500 rounds through it. And if it works, I wouldn't even change the BCG. i just have a spare one with me. Good to go. Philosophy of use, WRL rifle, absolutely. Competition, mm, mm, I, For competition, it's funny that I'm going to kind of part ways with this. Because competition is where you're really heating up a rifle. You're shooting, 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 shooting a lot, a lot. Yeah, that could happen in without rule of law. It could happen in, as a law enforcement officer. It's much. It's going to be much more rare. Um, I would probably go with an upgraded piece, upgraded internals for me. Because if I'm out to compete, I'm out to win, and I don't want. I want to minimize variables. I don't want stuff going down on me. I think when guys say, "Hey, you know, not a great gun, but not good enough for me because I'm a competitor," I'll sign off on that. I get you. Yeah. But why? Why take? You know, you want to win. But most guys who use an AR-15 in defensive encounters will probably never put 100 rounds through it. Truth, dark. That's the way it is. In fact, for practicing, they'll probably never put 200 rounds a year through it, judging from the people I know who own black rifles. Yeah, competitive options. Of course, you can roll your own, make it exactly how you want, but most guys I know, like me, that do that end up spending a lot of money. It's just the way it is. They spend a lot of money. They're like, oh my gosh, my bill cost me like $1,200, $1,500. I was like, yeah, there you go. Uh, all types of value point errors. I've given you a couple choices already. You got the MSR 15 by Savage. It shot a little bit better than these guns, not much. And then you've got the Saint by Springfield Armory and a whole bunch of others. Good time to buy black rifles for now. Leading to my end statement on the black rifle, the AR 15 which is probably a demonetizable term in certain venues, if you know what I mean. Hey man, I always get a kick out of guys who will review guns and they act like they're not going to be political. Dude, if you're reviewing a gun, you're political. Especially now. If you review any type of tactical rifle, you're extremely political just by the nature of your subject matter. So don't try to dance and say, hey, you know, I'm not going to be political. I'm just going to talk about the, you know, the features of the gun. Well, guess what? There are millions of people who think you're evil for even recommending these rifles to anyone. Never mind, we still have a need, like I said in my singing intro, for black rifles. Why? Because they're still evil in this world. There's people that do evil. You can't reason with them. They go out. They do these mass shootings. It's horrible. What gun stops it? Usually an AR-15. It's a lifesaver. It saves lives every day. The AR does. It's a valid option. If you're going to ban the AR-15, you better ban everything. So don't believe anybody who says, oh, well, we should just ban AR-15s. What they're really saying is they're going to ban everything. Go watch Crowder's Miss on the AR-15. Uh, it's in YouTube. I'll try to put a link in if I can. Awesome piece. Totally agree with what he said there. He's funny. And he's on point. So we can still need black rifles in the hands of civilians in the United States of America. And there's millions of them and you're never going to wave a magic wand and get rid of them. Ever. I don't care what happens. Guys are not going to register them. They're not going to give them up. And the more you clamp down on trigger modification and stuff, the more things are just going to go haywire. I mean, guys are going to say, oh, okay, cool. I'll just convert it to full auto. You watch. That'll happen. I mean, if everything's illegal, then nothing's illegal. 
Yeah, the AR-15 is America's rifle. It preserves freedom both in, on our military battlefields in the form of the M16 and the M4 series, and it does so every day in the hands of responsible, good people who own it. Yep. And I fully support it. Uh, join the NRA, stay with the NRA. It is the biggest gun rights organization that has the best chance of turning back what's coming down the pipe, guys. I will not relent on that. I do not apologize for it. Thanks for listening to my bad singing. Thanks for the thumbs up, being Patreon. Done.